Hey, what's up? Ryan Dice here from digitalmarketer.com. And what I want to do right now is just give you a very simple framework uh, for you to outline your customer journey. Now, if you don't know what a customer journey is, it's simply a way of visualizing how do visitors, uh, prospects, people who have no idea who you are, how do they find out who you are, become aware of you and your brand's existence, how do they then uh, transform into you know, prospects, subscribers, initial purchasers, and then on into hopefully raving fans. So that's the general um, customer journey. There's a lot of different customer journey frameworks out there. I'm gonna give you the one that we use here at Digital Marketer. It's an eight step framework. Um, in addition to showing you the framework, I'm also just gonna give you a really simple way that you can brainstorm it on a whiteboard like I'm doing here. Uh, or you could just do this on a sheet of paper. I like the idea of doing this on a whiteboard because then you can work with your team. I'm gonna show you how to do that as well. So let's get started with just drawing out um, the basic framework. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna draw a box. All right, so you can see here, got a, got a nice, have a nice box. And then I want you to go along the bottom and about two thirds of the way down, draw a line there, come over another third, give me a line there, and then the last third here, and then connect from here over. So what we have are, uh, we have an eight boxes within a box with a big box on this side. All right, and you'll see why in just a moment. So here are the eight stages of a customer journey as we see them at Digital Marketer. Stage one is the awareness stage, okay? The awareness stage. In this one, we're answering the question of literally, how do visitors become aware that we exist? Now, more times than not, this is going to happen in the form of advertising, right? Maybe you're buying traffic on Facebook, Google AdWords. It could also be referrals. Uh, it, it could also be um, organic right, search, th those types of things. So I want you to think, what are all the different ways that we generate, uh, that, that we go about generating awareness? And you could go in and write them all in. So you could write in, you know, PPC, you could write in Facebook, you could write in, you know, search, get down to the campaign level. You get as granular as you want, or what I recommend doing, if you've got more space to work with, maybe you turn an entire whiteboard into one of these, and you get members of the team to actually write things down on a post-it note. And then just different members of the team are, posting up and filling in this particular square. And we do this through each step. You'll see why we do that in just a second. Okay, so stage one, awareness. How does awareness happen for you and your brand currently? Then we're gonna go to stage two, which is engage, the engagement stage. What are the things that we do to turn this awareness into actual engagement? If we think about it, awareness, picture that kind of like a glance. Okay, I'm aware that you exist. But there's a big difference between a glance and a stare. There's a big difference between getting somebody to wave back at you when you're saying hi and getting somebody to engage in actual conversation. So what are the things that you're currently doing to engage with these folks to get them to become aware? What does that look like? Um, more times than not, this looks like content. So it might be a blog post, it might be a video like the one that I'm producing right now, right? Getting a little bit meta, this is engagement. If you're watching it, it's more than a glance, we're beginning to uh, engage, right? So there's the engage stage here. How is that happening with you? Like what are the things that you are doing? We just wanna be very intentional about this. We wanna be intentional about what are the ways that we're currently engaging. So that's stage two. Now we get into stage three. This is the subscribe stage or the subscriber stage. How do we get aware visitors to become engaged visitors and then to actually subscribe so we have the ability to follow up? So now we're thinking about things like what lead magnets are we deploying? Uh, what types of gated content? Maybe for you the subscribe stage is a webinar, right? Somebody registering for a webinar. Uh, maybe it's them registering for a demo or something like that, right? So that is the subscribe stage. We have their contact information and we have permission to follow up. That's stage three. How do you do that? Write it down. You can write it in the box or you can get out the post-it notes, right? How, or, I'm sorry, the sticky notes. So however you're doing that, Get it done. Now, the way that this process moves is we're progressing through these different stages. Now we're gonna go up into stage four. So I'll go ahead and number these stages as well. There we go. So stage four is the convert stage. The convert stage. And the question that we're asking at the convert stage is how do we get these subscribers to make a micro commitment? Okay, a micro commitment. In general, as human beings, we show commitment in one of two ways. The first is with money, and the second is with time. 
So what we're looking for in this stage is how do we get them to make a very small investment or how do we get them to make uh, of, of their money? How do we get them to make an investment in their time? So wallet, calendar, money, time. That's what we're looking for here. So this could be something like if you have a loss leader offering, maybe, maybe there's a, an ultra low ticket offer, what we've referred to in the past as a tripwire offer. Uh, we sell seven, digital marketer, we sell you know, $7 execution plans, for example. It's only seven bucks, but that's a micro commitment of money. The, another example of the convert stage would be if somebody, for example, attends a webinar. So note that I said down here, registering for a webinar, that's a subscribe. But if somebody actually shows up and attends the webinar, what have they just done? They've just committed some of their time. So you can see how we're beginning now to map the process, right? They clicked on this ad, they arrived at their page, they watched this video. At the end of the video, we invited them to subscribe to, to, to register for our webinar. After they registered, guess what? They actually showed up. Right, so this is how we're beginning to progress through. Now this is a biggie and this is one that most marketers forget about when it comes to visualizing the customer journey. This is stage five and this is the excite stage. The excite stage. Here's why this is so important. You got them to do something here. You got to make a, a micro commitment, a micro purchase or a micro commitment of time. A little bit of money, a little bit of time. A transaction occurred. The relationship changed. That's what we call them a convert. The relationship has converted really from kind of this visitor stage into an actual customer stage, into this kind of prospect stage that you see here. Now they're a customer, right? That's what's beginning to happen. This is the, that beautiful conversion that happens from prospect to customer. That's what's occurred. But if they weren't happy, if they weren't excited about the transaction that occurred here, guess what? They're not gonna progress through. This is kinda like getting that first date. You got them to meet you for coffee. But if when you met them for coffee, if you showed up with like a dirty shirt, smelling like garbage and only talking about yourself and telling bad jokes, guess what? They're not excited that they met you for coffee and you're not getting a second date. That's why this excite stage is so important. So as marketers, we have to ask ourselves, how do we make sure they're excited about this? So what are you doing at this stage to make sure that, for example, they actually consume what they went through, what they got access to over here? How are you working with the product team to make sure that the promises that were made back here were delivered, all right? And specifically what we're asking ourselves is how can we drive to an aha moment? The moment, what they did here where they go, aha, I get it. Now, he, let me unpack aha really quickly, okay? Aha is simply wonder, combined with understanding, okay? Understanding combined with wonder. Ah, right? Ah, I'm, I am amazed, I'm impressed. I mean, imagine if you were to go and see, you know, beautiful, you know, Vista for the first time. If you've ever been to the Grand Canyon or stood at the top of a, of a mountain, right? You're just sitting there going, ah, this is amazing. That is wonder, okay? Ha is understanding. Ha, I get it, right? So. Aha, right? That is wonder combined with understanding. Aha, I get it. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm amazed by it and I understand it. Now here's what's important. If you simply amaze them, but they don't understand what you did, then they like it, but they're confused. They're, they're impressed by you, but they don't necessarily fully trust you yet because they don't know what you did. If you make them understand something that they don't care about, you answered a question that they didn't ask, you just bored the snot out of them, they're still not gonna wanna continue. So the question we have to ask ourselves at the excite stage is, what do they need to believe to be true? What needs to happen to trigger this aha moment? Let me give you a really quick example. I'm spending a bit of time here, but this is important. Um, the aha moment for Apple is that moment when you open the box and you hear that almost like sucking sound because it's packaged so perfectly, it's like, Oh my gosh, and you also understand, wow, this is a company that really cares about design. Um, the aha moment could be delivered on a webinar, or it could be delivered on whatever you know, uh, call occurred here, or it could be something that was delivered in the product itself that they bought here, where they go, this is really great. I got some value here. Did it answer all of my questions? No, but it gave me hope. You know, it, gave, it gave me some understanding. I, I, I'm amazed. But, so we gotta make sure that it's not just about getting them to come to a webinar. It's not just about getting them to make a small purchase. 
The magic is if you can get them to do that, and in the process of consuming this, they have that aha moment. Aha, wonder, understanding. The ah plus the ha. That's the excite stage, and as marketers, you cannot leave this up to your product team. It is your job to ensure that the aha moment is reached. So that's gonna be done with follow-up series, uh, it could be done with retargeting. Whatever needs to happen, they gotta get to the aha, or they're not gonna progress to the sixth stage, which is the ascend stage. I don't even know if I spelled ascend right, so we're gonna go with that. Um, the idea of the ascend stage, the reason that we visualize this as taller is because ideally the ascend stage has multiple levels. We like to visualize the ascend stage as a ladder, right? So generally they're gonna enter in by buying a lower price offering and maybe you have higher ticket products as they move up the ladder. So at Digital Marketer, for example, we have Digital Marketer Lab Basic, we have Plus, we have Elite, uh, we also have our certified partner program, we have events. So your ladder of ascension could be different products. It could also, if you have a subscription business, let's say you're a SaaS company, um, it could be month one, month two, month three, right? You get that kind of idea. But this idea of an ascension is really, really important and baking that through to make sure that it, uh, that it actually occurs and mapping it out and asking the question as a marketer, how do we get people who enter here to then go to this level and then to this level? How does that happen? And we're mapping out the journey. Now, when we get into stage seven, this is when we're kind of entering another phase. So we talked about this as being really that, that prospect phase from one to three. At the convert, it's the customer phase. Now what we're moving into is the advocate phase. Remember, the goal of the customer journey is to map the process from really stranger to friend to customer and then ultimately to raving fan. That's what we want. We want raving fans and you'll see why in just a little bit. So at stage seven, this is the advocate phase, right? This is when people are happy and they're beginning to be successful and they're leaving things like testimonials. They're telling customer stories. They're beginning to say nice things about us even when we don't ask, all right? These are our advocates. These are the folks that you can reach out to and say, wow, thanks so much for that feedback. Thanks for being so active in our community, for being so active in the forum. Gosh, could, um, could, could somebody from our team interview you and get a customer story that we can then leverage as maybe a customer story at the engage stage, right? To engage with additional customers in this type. So that's the advocacy stage. The eighth and final stage is the promoter stage. And the promoter is essentially an advocate who is now actively promoting our products and services. So they are someone who's generating referrals. They're, I still don't know if I spelled referrals right either. There's probably like an extra R, so I don't know. This is not a spelling lesson, but the beautiful thing about referrals is what referrals wind up doing is they wind up closing the loop because referrals create additional awareness. So while this is a journey that flows through in the following manner, it eventually comes back around and closes the loop. Now here's what I'll say about referrals. Uh, if you want to generate more referrals, don't worry about how do I make my customers happy? How do we run referral campaigns? Here's the key, make them successful. Successful customers refer. Successful customers refer even when they're not trying to because the people around them, their peers say, wow, you're doing great, you're so successful, what did you do? And guess what, they tell other people about you. So maybe some of your promoters are active affiliates. Maybe they're value-added resellers. Maybe they're referral partners. Whatever you call it though, if you want more of them, make more customers successful, all right? So this is how we go about visualizing the customer journey. Uh, at Digital Marketer. This is how I would encourage you to visualize it. I would encourage you to run through this exercise with your team and say, okay, stage one, how do we generate awareness? How do we generate engagement? How do we get them to subscribe? And then ask yourself, where could we improve? And my advice, kind of what I'll leave you with, is pick one box, one area for optimization that you can really dive in, one point in this customer factory where you believe Folks are getting hung up. You know, gosh, we're getting a lot of traffic, engagement's okay, subscribe's okay, but we're not getting many of them to convert. And focus your optimization efforts in that box and in that area. And I would encourage you, don't start with awareness, all right? 
Look at your ascension. Are you getting them to ascend? And we generally like to optimize going backwards. We want to make sure that we're maximizing the value of the customers that we have, that we're getting them as excited as possible, that we're getting more to convert, to subscribe, that our engagement's high. Then let's increase the awareness. You don't want to increase the awareness of a broken journey. Okay, so that is the uh, advice that I have for you. I hope that you find this tool effective. I hope that you do um, use it with your own team. And if you have uh, any additional, if you want to go deeper on this, there'll be some links in and around this video where, where you can sign up, get some additional info. Uh, and also, heck, maybe even subscribe. Remember, we're here. Maybe even subscribe. Maybe you decide to sign up for a trial at Digital Marketer Lab. I know for a fact um, that we would love to have you and love to show you, frankly, what our journey is like. All right, so thanks so much for watching. Uh, be sure to subscribe. Be sure to sign up for a trial at Digital Marketer Lab. And uh, I'll be seeing you later on in the journey. Thanks.